Hello everyone. In this short video, I want to talk about the upcoming new Plutus version, Plutus version 3. I want to give an overview over the features that we can look forward to. And I also want to show a demo of something that I find quite exciting that you can do with Plutus V3 that wasn't possible in the past. So I'll give a brief overview over the features, in particular the bitwise primitives, the cryptographic primitives. Then I'll do the demo. And in the end, I'll briefly talk about sums of products. Plutus V3 focuses on performance, throughput, smart contract size, and platform capabilities, and interoperability with other blockchains. Mm. It is now available for testing on SunshineNet, and the new features fall into three groups. We have bitwise primitives that open the door to a lot of interesting applications. We have cryptographic primitives like BLS 12.3. 81, Blake 2B 224, and Ketchak 256, which are particularly interesting for things like smoothly integrating with blockchains like Bitcoin and Ethereum. And we have some of products, which are a change not to built in functions available in Plutus, but to the Plutus core language itself allowing for more compact and efficient representation of data. Bitwise primitives allow the manipulation of data at the lowest level, at the level of bits. And those operations are the fundamental building blocks of many algorithms and data structures. And there are lots of applications ranging from representing and manipulating sets of integers efficiently over the implementation of cryptographic primitives to fast searches. In particular, it's now possible to convert integer to byte string in Plutus. And that allows it to, for example, hash arbitrary data, which hasn't been possible in the past. Cryptographic primitives are one of the basic building blocks of blockchain technology. And the primitives you choose can have a huge impact on what the blockchain can do. We, of course, believe that we chose wisely with the cryptographic primitives we chose for Cardano. But other blockchains have made other choices. And that has made it difficult in the past to interact, interoperate with other blockchains. Mm -hmm. For example, it would be nice if Ethereum signatures could be checked in Plutus. That wasn't possible in the past. Now it is possible. So there are three groups of new cryptographic primitives. One is about BLS 12.381. It's about an elliptic curve pairing. It includes 17 new primitives that support cryptographic curves. And use cases include sidechains, zero knowledge proofs, Hydra, Mithril, and Atala. Then we have Blake 2B 224, which is a cryptographic hash function. And it allows, in particular, to, from within Plutus, now hash public keys and scripts, which has a lot of interesting applications. Finally, there's Ketchak 256, which is a cryptographic hash function that uh, supports Ethereum signature verification within Plutus scripts. And this brings us to our demo. So I want to demonstrate how it is now possible to send ADA on Cardano to a recipient that is identified by his Ethereum address. So the workflow will be as follows. First, the sender locks ADA in a smart contract. And he gives the Ethereum address of the recipient in the datum. Then the recipient signs a message with MetaMask using his address, his Ethereum address. And the message that he signs will be his Cardano public key hash. And then using the Ethereum public key, the Ethereum signature, and the Cardano public key hash, he can 
create a redeemer that allows him to unlock the funds on Cardano. Let's start by looking at the smart contract written in Plutus TX in Haskell. So it takes one parameter, which is just a constant. It's this weird string, Ethereum signed message and length of the message that Ethereum uses for so-called personal message signing. So that will be this first parameter. Then we have the datum, which is just a byte string. That's the Ethereum address of the recipient. And we have the redeemer, which we can look at here. It consists of the Ethereum public key, the Cardano public key hash, and the Ethereum signature. And using this, how do we verify whether the recipient is allowed to unlock the funds? We will verify the Ethereum signature. This is the interesting new part that is possible now in Plutus v3. We will check that the address that signed this message, that the signature comes from the address that's specified in the datum. And finally, we will check that the pub key hash, the signed message, the Cardano pub key hash, actually was used to sign this transaction. And thus, it's guaranteed that really only the person in control of the Ethereum address mentioned in the datum is able to unlock these funds. And the interesting part or the first interesting part happens here with this new built-in function verify ECDSA SECP 256K1 signature. So that gets a so-called compressed public key the hash of the message and the signature, and then checks whether the signature is valid. So we need some manipulation to get this compressed public key. So in Ethereum, there are uncompressed public keys that are 65 bytes long, and then compressed ones that are 33 bytes long. So we compute that here, and it involves some slicing of byte strings and some manipulation. Then once we have that, we can actually use the Ethereum pub key hash from the redeemer to compute the address belonging to that, the Ethereum address. And then we can compare that address to the address mentioned in the datum. And finally, we can check that the transaction is actually signed by the public key hash that's mentioned in the redeemer which, remember, is also the message signed in Ethereum. I should also mention that in order to compute the Ethereum address from the Ethereum public key, we need to hash the public key. And we need to use Ketchak 256 for this. Another thing that wouldn't have been possible before, but is now possible in Plutus v3. So let's try this. I have set up um, on SuncheonNet two accounts, two public-private key pairs, one called Alice, one Bob. And I provide some scripts to check the balances of, of those participants. So let's first see where we stand in the beginning. So Alice starts with 9,857 test data. You can check Bob. So I tried this out before, so Bob already has some funds. And let's say Alice wants to send 1,000 test ADA to Bob, but using Bob's Ethereum address. So for this purpose, I created an Ethereum address, I mean a new Ethereum account with this address here, visible in Metamask. There are no funds at that address. I can copy this address to the clipboard. And now the first thing Alice has to do is she has to lock a thousand test ADA in the smart contract. And for the datum, she has to use the Ethereum address. So I have a little helper program that computes the datum from the address. 
as parameter, I give the address. I just copy it from Ethereum, but I leave this 0x out. Okay, this is the datum I must use in JSON format. Now I can use a script, ls to ketchuk, that will craft this transaction. So it's on SuncheonNet, change address is herself, txn I must change, so I must check again for Alice's funds, and I see she has this UTXO available, so I use that. And I must change the amount, I think here it's 10 ADA, so let's add two zeros to make it a thousand. And this file is the datum I just computed corresponding to this Ethereum address. And uh, let's check at the script address. I think at the moment there shouldn't be any funds there. Okay. Now I run this script. Okay. The transaction has been successfully submitted. Now we must wait a couple of seconds. Then we can check again. So at the moment it hasn't arrived yet. Okay, and now the funds are there at this address, at this UTXO. Now Bob wants to unlock this. And he can, if he can prove that he is in control of the Ethereum address given in the datum. And he has to sign the message that consists of his Cardano pubkey hash. Now I have Bob's pubkey hash here. So let's copy that. And I created a very primitive little website that makes this signing process easy. So I just paste my Cardano pubkey here, pubkey hash, click sign message, MetaMask opens. And admittedly, this is not ideal in a production application that would be insecure to see these cryptic uh, characters here. The reason is that this pub key hash is considered as just a sequence of bytes and those are not printable. Of course, it would be nicer if the base 16 representation like here would also be visible in MetaMask. But that uh, shall not bother us now, so let's just sign. And now this little website gives some information, so it spits out the public key, or one public key, corresponding to this Ethereum address, the signature, and just for verification, the address. So if I compare that with MetaMask, this one here, then I will see that that is actually the same address here. Okay, and now I must use the public key, the Cardano public key hash, and the signature to craft a redeemer that I can then use to unlock the funds. So let's copy this pub key. There's another script that computes the redeemer. First argument is this Ethereum pub key. Second argument is the Cardano pubkey hash, and the third argument is the signature provided by MetaMask. And there's my redeemer. So it contains these three byte strings, the Ethereum pubkey, the Cardano pubkey hash, and the Ethereum signature. Okay. Now Bob can craft the transaction have a script for that as well. So it change address is Bob. Collateral, you must see. Okay, that's fine, that's still available. Now as input here, we must update that to the UTXO at the smart contract address. So this one here. This is the script corresponding to our smart contract. We don't have to provide a datum because I used inline datum when I 
created the transaction when Alice locked the funds. And this is the redeemer we just computed. And Bob has to sign. So I can execute the script. And it's successfully submitted. And now we just have to wait and see when Bob gets the funds. And this time it was very quick. We see the funds, almost 1,000 ADA, have already arrived. And there you have it. So now with Plutus V3, it's possible to do things like that, to interact smoothly with, for example, Ethereum, and to verify Ethereum signatures produced by MetaMask from within a Plutus script. The last feature provided by Plutus V3 is called Sum of Products. And what that means is that it provides native support for data types. Until now, Plutus Core didn't have that. So if you wanted to use structured data, you had to encode it somehow, usually using something called Scott encoding. But in Plutus V3, there is native support for data types using the so-called sums of products. And the advantage of that is that it's much more efficient. So you don't have to always evaluate everything anymore. But depending on your data, only specific branches that are relevant. And that means validators will be faster and shorter. They will consume less memory. And therefore, transactions will also become cheaper. And benchmarks have shown that there's potentially 30% improvement in that regard. It also means that compiler writers, for example, other languages targeting Plutus Core, like Icon, can benefit from that and improve their compilers. If we go back to our demo project, this is the validator we demoed. And we see that it takes 6,463 bytes. And this has been compiled with the old Plutus Core version 1.0.0. So let's change this now to the new one that supports sums of products. And let's regenerate these serialized validator files. I also have to change this here, which is used for this Ethereum message prefix. Let's check sizes again. And we see that it has become significantly shorter. So there's a tangible benefit already visible just looking at script size. This is the end of this little overview over Plutus V3. I hope you are as excited as I am about the upcoming improvements. And I hope that many of you will give it a spin on Sunshine Net. Thank you very much.